So a moment ago we created the page. If this was your first time creating it, we did some important things. If you've created it previously, um, I mentioned that there were those couple of things to edit. But I'm also going to show you then before we actually post anything because right now if I were to start to post stuff just like when I talked about Google Plus and Twitter you're trying to catch fish without a good lure so that is I don't have my logo here I don't have my background cover photo here I probably don't have my about screen set up I don't have anything that will entice people why should I click like the short answer of likes is the more likes you get the more target audience you get things change unfortunately and when we play in Facebook's playground we either play by their rules or we don't play so here's what I mean just a few years ago maybe two years maybe a year and a half ago it used to be that the be-all and end-all was you wanted likes you wanted to tell everyone like my page people went to your business like my page in the real world you wanted likes 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 because what likes were were an invitation opt-in from those customers that clicked like to your page they were saying it's okay that you show me your ads your posts so if I had a hundred likes I had a hundred followers so if I posted a coupon on Facebook that says this Saturday use this coupon 20% off those 100 people would see it because they've liked and therefore agreed to see my posts which are usually ads well Facebook has changed the algorithm has changed the rules of the playground and now out of those 100 people maybe three see it you just lost 97 percent of your audience I don't know what the exact number is I'm being hyperbolic but you've lost a lot of the audience because Facebook changed the algorithm because Facebook wants people to connect with people and see each other's stuff and businesses are secondary yeah right what Facebook wants is for you to pay for exposure so isn't it convenient you no longer can reach that audience but wait Facebook gives you a way to pay to reach more audience so either you like that and you pay or you don't and you use Twitter or Facebook or Pinterest or something else that's the that's the facts unfortunately Facebook has changed it so that your audience reach is not the same as it used to be a year or two ago just because you've got a thousand likes doesn't mean those 1,000 will see it I don't know the exact values but it's a lot lower than it used to be I've been doing this for years everyone in my company remarks remember when we would post something we would get 500 views now we get 40 well we well, now we get 500 now we get a thousand views if we pay I'll get to that in a moment. I know that sounds annoying, but that's the fact of the matter for now for using Facebook nowadays. That's the double-edged sword. You've got 1.49 billion other people you could target, but not for free. Uh, you're going to be a needle in a haystack if you don't cough up the money. And it could be as little as $1. That could still reach a lot of people, $1. Obviously, $10 is more reach, $100 is more reach, $500 is more reach it's up to you to decide on your budget and you may feel like you know I, I use this I'm entitled to it or why would I pay it's just stuff on a computer it's a form of marketing just like people pay to uh, send out the, the newsletter or the billboard or the radio ad someone paid for all of that it's marketing and Facebook has embraced that it started off as a social network for college kids a social network only for Harvard college kids then it expanded to other colleges then other schools, then the general public. Okay, the general public is on it. How do you make money off of that? Ads. So then Facebook allowed companies to create a page. Then Facebook figured it out. If we, chew, if we charge companies to show their ads to more people, we'll make money. And that's how make Facebook makes their money. That's why Facebook is at $95 market, uh, stock market price, where a year ago it was at 40 So love it or hate it. That's why on a personal level, I don't like Facebook. On a business level, I love Facebook because we can invest $5 of the client's money and reach more people than we could have before. And that's a double-edged sword of Facebook. But before you drop your hard-earned money into that, we'll, we'll take a moment to set up some important aspects of your site so that you can catch more fish with your lure. So the 
first thing I want to do is get a little bit acclimated to managing this because it can be confusing. The main thing that I said, get used to switching between your accounts up here. If you don't see your logo or your company's name there, you're probably not editing it. You're still on your personal profile. Switch over to your business profile. Uh, and I have to catch myself also the terminology. It's a personal profile and it's a business page. That's the official terminology of Facebook. Personal profile, business page. And I have to catch myself, I say it wrong sometimes also, because they, they chose such generic words, it's easy to forget. So when you're talking about pages on Facebook, you're always talking about business pages. If you're talking about a profile, it's a personal profile. Make sure you're on your business page and not your personal profile. So switch over to it. And then at the top you get various navigation screens. Notice I said screens, not pages, because that's the confusion. A page screen, a message screen, a notification screen, a publishing tools screen. And so I'm currently looking at what my page looks like to people that visit my page. If they searched for me up here or if they know my address, this is the screen. This screen is what my page, my business page, looks like to people. Why would anyone follow this? They have the generic logo, no graphic up here, no content, a little bit of about information, but that's it. So what we'll do is You've got a timeline screen, an about screen, photo screen, like screen, and more. I showed it briefly a moment ago. I'll show it more now. Switch to your about screen on your business page. You may not be able to do it right now, but you definitely need to do it soon if you haven't. Fill in everything that is here as accurately as possible. Your category, of course, the name of your page, Topics. Choose three words to describe your page. Again, this is for you to be found and for you to be most effectively shown to the target audience you care about. If you never fill this in, this is something that might be dragging you down. So it says choose three topics, three words. So baking. And it might also pop up to show you some suggestions. Oftentimes, they may or may not be useful. Like here, it's telling me, do you mean the baking bar in the United Kingdom? No, but I do mean the interest <coughs> of baking that people have chosen. What else? Cookies. I saw Cookie Monster a moment ago. Cheryl's cookies, Ben's cookies. Well, these, these are suggestions to connect with other Facebook pages. I'm going to ignore those, and sometimes there's a good one like the actual cookies and cake, uh, cookies and cream category or topic. None of these are quite these suggest. None of these suggestions are quite showing up, so I won't choose any of them. But you can, um, you can, you can type something like cooking and ignore that and just press tab. Sometimes that does it. No, you do have to choose a topic. So these are the topics that are uh, that are other pages and 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 categories and such on Facebook. So if you find any that are useful to you, go ahead and select them. This is three. Again, that's supposed to be to get found. Cooking interest. So I'll just put two for the moment, but it recommends three. Facebook web address. Uh, if you have the ability to add a Facebook web address, go for it, because my current Facebook web address is facebook.com slash pages slash victors dash bakery slash 46086 blah blah blah. That's my official address at the moment. It's much better to have facebook.com slash victors bakery. And this is where you add it. It'll tell you if you're able to or not, because sometimes you're not able to unless you have a certain amount of followers. There's a start date which you can set as this is the date that we joined Facebook or the date that um, that the company was founded on, started on, we opened our first restaurant, whatever. You can choose any one of these, but this is useful to build 
uh, your timeline of the amount of time that you're on Facebook because again um, a brand new spam fly-by-night um, uh, Facebook page is not as relevant as one that actually has been on Facebook for a while and has built content and built an audience and built trust. So if you fill in your start date that goes toward that. Founded in 1999 in April, all the way down to the day. Address, if you're a physical address, a physical location, you want your address there. That'll also help you get found. And it says if you add a valid address, people will be able to see and check into your page using Facebook Places. This is that other screen where you can set it up so that people can check in. And the checking in is useful because then that could lead to other strategies such as check in to our Facebook page this Saturday for 10% off. So if you have the ability for people to check in, they come to the restaurant, they check in and show the server, I checked in. Great, 10% off. That'll give them that'll keep them coming back as you create these kinds of interesting marketing tactics. That's something that I can post on Facebook. Come to the restaurant on this date, show the server you checked in, get a free dessert. If you don't want people to check in or review your page, don't fill this address in. You can fill your address in in another screen, but this address will let people check in and review your site. To re review your business on Facebook. There's the short description I wrote earlier. I can change it. The Impressum. You can ignore this. This is only for certain European countries. Some European countries require a statement of ownership because any crazy person can make any crazy thing on the internet. Therefore, these countries say, let's put those p crazy people accountable to what they wrote on the online. Or let's put those, uh, let's put it on front street to show that these, that this particular politician owns this particular page that is so positive for them. So not, in, not important for us because we don't live in Austria, Germany, or Switzerland. The Impressum. Long description. Again, you would take a moment to write a little bit more than the 155 characters to explain what your business is about. So then when someone searches on the top here, you could appear on that search. Here's a spot for a mission. Didn't I ask if you took my SEO class, I asked you to create a mission? Well, I asked you to create a, a vision in this document that I gave you, a vision statement. You can use that to craft it as well. Founded date could be redundant based on the previous one up here about started, and that's fine. Any awards, you can add products. I don't think this is very useful. There's a place, a, a place for you to add products, but you can't sell anything on Facebook. It's useful for search, but it's still going to take you back to your, to your website to sell the product. And this is, this is not useful at all, really, in, a, in terms of keeping inventory or really selling anything, it's kind of limited. Phone number for contact is useful. Email address is useful. On these two, of course, you want to have a business email or a business phone. You don't want your personal phone number. You want uh, to be called at the business location. And I believe I mentioned last week or two weeks ago, you can create a free Google Voice number. You can get a free phone number from Google. I'm not going to show you how. You can look it up pretty easy. But you can get a free phone number. Just search Google Voice and you'll find out how to get a free phone number from Google. It is tied to a real phone number. So someone can call that phone number and you can have it set up so that when they call that phone number it goes directly to your personal phone number or you can have someone call that phone number direct to voicemail and have a nice professional you've reached victor.com please leave a message and then you never have to answer that business number until you hear the voicemail but then that way that shields you from crazy calls you can get of course email addresses free emails from gmail yahoo whatever better would be to have an email address of your business if you've got victor.com you should be able to create 
um, support at victor.com. Not that you're creating it here, you're creating it over at your at your provider. You're creating it at GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, and then you're putting that address in here. This is not to create an address. This is to use an address. Here's my website. This one is not useful to that many people. Official page. Enter the official brand, celebrity, or organization your page is about. So if I made yet another Justin Bieber fan page, I would then be marking here, this is a page about Justin Bieber. It's not important for yourself because it's your page about your business. So you are already the official representation of your business. This is your business page. So you don't need to put anything there. So this is important stuff to have filled in, so that you have a fully legitimate filled in profile, I'm sorry, page, so that then people can find you, and like you, and so forth. Any questions on this screen? Yes? I get topics online, so I'm not sure if I miss something right Unfortunately, some people's screens don't look exactly like mine, and that also relates to what, uh, what category you chose. So if you don't see every single screen that I do, you probably have a different category, and that's okay. You just fill in as much as you can of what is presented to you. All right, so this is the About screen of my Facebook page. One other screen that I want to look at for basic settings first. We want to build a good foundation to build on top of it. One of the foundational screens is back on settings. On the top right corner, you should see your settings link. Click on that to see the settings screen. So on the settings screen, there's various <coughs> sub-screens. I won't look at every single one of them, but I'll, I'll show you some important stuff here, because first under settings we have general. As I said previously, uh, when we talked about Twitter, there's many examples all the time of Twitter fails, of companies using Twitter and using it badly, of companies trying to start a hashtag and the hashtag gets co-opted, and their message is co-opted. That's because Twitter is very, very open. On the other hand, Facebook, for better or for worse, is a place like Google+, Plus where you can control your message more. You can post stuff on your business page, and if someone posts something mean, delete it. That's it. If someone posts something on topic, delete it. If something, someone is being mean, block them. That's it. You control the message, and it's okay. There's no problem about infringing on someone's free speech and my First Amendment rights and blah, blah, blah. This is your property, your Facebook page. Just like someone cannot come to your front door of your house and yell at you, you tell them, get off my property. Go yell at me on the sidewalk where the cops can get you. So um, here is your own property as well, and there are various options here that I will make you aware of to keep your property more secure, to stop the spammers and the haters and all of that. Um, it's uh, right here, this, the third option. Visitor posts. Anyone can publish to the page. Anyone can add photos and videos. Right now, you have the door wide open for your page. Anyone can write anything and post anything to your page. On the one hand, that's great because I want to build an audience. On the other hand, that's terrible, because anyone can post anything they want on your page. You can delete it, of course. I'll show you where. But better safe than sorry. Ounce of prevention. If you click on Edit, allow visitors to, to the page to publish a post, yes or no. You can turn, totally turn off comments on your, on your Facebook page. You may want that. You, you may want to put out your content and not let mean people write mean stuff. 
but as I said previously also, um, I recommend, and my company runs social media as a dialogue rather than a monologue. If you put disabled posts, you will have, you're creating a monologue. A monologue is one person talking out to someone. A dialogue is back and forth. And I believe that a, a social media should be a monologue. You, you post something, people react to it, respond to you, you respond to them, you get the ball rolling, you get followers, you get interaction. You put it, you're a monologue, you put something and it's kind of a dead end. No one can reply, maybe you can get a like, but then you don't have that human element of replying and, and all of that. Maybe sometimes you will get a negative post. Maybe I do get a negative review. That's part of the business. Some people have a negative experience legitimately, and then of course there's some that take advantage of negativity to try to get something out of you. But I think in the long term, those that are negative can be swayed over to being positive by addressing them. So if you have the ability for people to comment on your, on your page, and it's a legitimate negative concern that they did find that cockroach in the pasta, then maybe you can contact them, communicate with them, and try to say, well, we're sorry that was a bad day, we fired the cook, please come back and try us again and we'll do better. Some sort of way to try to um, smooth things over. Um, so allowing people to comment is a good thing. But what's better is review posts by other people before they are published to the page. And that is not on. I highly recommend you turn that on. People can still get the box that says comment or reply or whatever, but it will not show up until you approve it. So I do recommend turn that one on. And I'll show you the screen where you review your comments in a little bit. That's the biggest advice I can give you. Control your message. Facebook lets you, so do it. Don't let the message get away from you. Do you want people to put photos and video? Yes or no? I don't, I don't have any positive or negative thing to say about that because I'm already covered with review the posts. Remember to save that. Yes? Okay, the example that you used about the cockroach and the pasta and the person had a legitimate complaint and then you address it by saying, I fired the, I fired the cook, please come back. How then have you changed that from a dislike to a like? because you have addressed the issue. It's still up to the complainer to change it. Um, we're showing here that we, that we are not some nameless corporation, um, that we are real people that are trying to address the concern, that we've tried to deal with the concern. We're doing our best, we're putting our best foot forward, we're putting out the olive branch. It's still up to the complainer to then themselves fix that. Okay. I just to so at least we're trying rather okay. than just being no recourse therefore they'll get even matter my concerns are not being addressed I'll put another bad review. Okay. So when you actually acknowledge that and then put that reply uh, I fired the cook we're trying to do better are you posting that with the negative post? Or are you yes. Just... Yes you're making it public. Making it public. You okay. can be talking to that person in private but that is not going to help you as much as if, as if it's in public. Because that, that negative comment that might have been public is going to continue to be public, whereas you're having this private conversation and people are going to say, oh, there's nothing being addressed there. Right. So if you're also addressing it in public, you're doing public relations there. You are showing to the public that you are trying to fix the issue publicly, okay. transparently. So I mentioned uh, favorites, don't worry about favorites, page visibility, currently the page is published, you can unpublish it te temporarily to make some changes and such, so that's how you can hide your page, remember to republish it if you do hide it, newsfeed audience and visibility for posts. Um, when we set our target audience earlier today, we were targeting this various audience, we can also target individual posts. So if we click edit there and turn that on, every post that we make, we can then target individually. If you set up the previous screen about the general targeting, you might not need to do this because you've already chosen your target audience. But if you need to focus a particular post to another target audience, you can turn that on. And when you post, 
each individual post, you can set that target audience. So you can decide what to do here. I have no positive or negative to say here. I'll leave it alone. This is new. Expiring posts. It used to be that you posted something and it would be there forever. So someone can go back five years ago and see that post if they search back for it. <coughs> now you can set posts that expire. So if you've got that sale um, that was only this weekend, why would you keep running that post a month later? So this is off by default. Not everyone needs this. But if you turn that on, once you publish a post, you'll have a new little box down there that says set expiration and therefore it'll automatically unpublish itself when it's all no longer necessary. I think that's a good one for some people. So in my case I will turn it on because I will have sales sometimes and I don't want that to constantly be visible. People coming to the restaurant, they didn't see the date, was a year ago, and they say, why don't I get this free meal? It's Saturday like you said, it's Saturday the 13th, why, why don't I get this free meal? Oh sir, the post says a year ago, I'm sorry. So if you set that, that'll help you. Messages. Allow people to contact my page privately by showing the messages button, and it's on. I recommend this one, you leave it on. Yes, any crazy person could start to privately contact you, but that's how we have the block ability. But here is good because maybe the person didn't want to put their big mean complaint right on your home page. They wanted to contact you privately and fix this privately. So now we have that ability. Your particular page has, if a person visits your page, I can't see it because I'm logged into my page, but if a person visits my page, they will, have an, they will have a button to message me privately, the manager. So that's a good one, I think. Tagging ability, this is up to you to decide. This is currently off in my case. Someone might add photos and they can add a tag, meaning that this is a photo I took at Victor's Bakery, so it's tagged Victor's Bakery. The good about that could be that as the friends and followers of that account see that photo and see that it's linked to Victor's Bakery, they may click through to my page and maybe follow my page. So if you let people tag you, you could get more audience exposure. It's off by default. Not everyone needs or wants this but it could expose you to more people if you let people tag you, your, your page, on their photos and videos. Page is visible to everyone, so I can restrict it to countries, or I could omit it from countries. Same thing with ages. You have to be at least 13 years old to use Facebook, so if kids are under 13 and they're using Facebook, technically they're violating the rules. I won't tell, but uh, everyone 13 and above, <coughs> and above alcohol related. Let's say everyone can see my Facebook page. Page moderation. Allow words or comments containing the following words. Add words to block separate by commas. So here you can put in some keywords uh, that you don't want to be visible on the page. Well, I've already got moderation at the top. So this is like double protection, and honestly, we usually don't do this. We have the moderation at the top that handles it, but here you can add words specifically. And um, you have 10,000 characters to add here. So if any of these posts are used, it will automatically mark as spam, so then it won't even show up. Profanity filter is off, so you can turn that on, and you have different levels of it, medium and strong, and this is determined by the Facebook algorithm and the community itself. So some words that you might find offensive, others might not, and vice versa. We've got medium and strong. <coughs> Similar page suggestions, choose whether your page is recommended, and that's on, and I would keep it on. Do you ever notice that if you like a page, then it might suggest, maybe you also like this, or that. I want that. If someone happened to like Betty Crocker baking, maybe my page will also be suggested. It's on by default, so that's good.
You can have people com uh, rank people's comments. That gives a sense of community and so forth. If someone commented on something and other people like that, they can click like. Those likes could then spread out to other people, so it's sort of like spreading your content a bit more. This is up to you to decide. I think it's, it's useful. So I would turn on that one. Because as people are commenting on this, the best comments will rise to the top. Hopefully the positive ones. And not just hopefully arbitrarily, because you're moderating things. You're saying this is good, this is not, and therefore you're controlling your message. Sometimes what happens is more than one page is created for whatever reason, and therefore they need to be merged. You don't want to delete that other page that isn't quite uh, complete, but it's got 10 likes. You don't want to delete those likes. You want to merge those likes with your current page. So there's a process there to merge. And then here's also to delete. If you want to throw in the towel, you don't want this after all, just delete it. Yes? Can you merge pages with Google? No, this is all just talking about Facebook pages. So again, I won't look at every single one of these pages, but let me mention a couple more. I mean, uh, I won't look at every single one of these screens, but I'll look at a couple more that I think are useful to you, such as, on the left, page rolls. Go to page rolls. This is where you add more managers. This is where you add more people to be able to control this page. It's not just one person using one login, which is a big failure point. It's multiple people using their own logins, which is better, because if one person gets hacked, I can just go back to this screen and remove them as a manager. No, no more harm done. So here, there's currently one admin, because I created it. I can add more people here. And this assumes that the other managers you're adding already have a Facebook page, a Facebook profile, a personal profile. If they don't, they'll be prompted to create one, so you can't get away from it. But if you've already got people that you want to add, you can add their email there, and then they can become a manager. And they have different levels of management. from admin down to analyst. Highest level of control to lowest level. So it was suggesting editor. An editor can edit the page, send messages, and publish as the page, create ads, see which admin created a post, and view insights. So it's pretty powerful. But the highest level is admin, which will allow that to have will allow that new person to have as much control as I do, which is add more managers, delete managers. So in theory, if you added someone as a manager, someone else in your company, and a year later you had a falling out and they quit, and there's still a manager there, they could log in as a manager and now delete you from your own page. So that's why it suggests add people as an editor. Then, perhaps at a future point, you can add them as as admins for more control, but this is a lot of control already. Post anything to the page, reply to the private messages, create ads, see insights, all of that important stuff, except to be able to add or remove the page. If you're an admin, you can delete the page. If you're an editor, you cannot delete the page. And it goes lower and lower. What about a moderator, an advertiser, an analyst? All the way to the bottom. An, anal an analyst can see which admin created a post or comment and view insights. They can't create anything on the page. They can't edit any anything on the page. But that at least will allow a person to log in and to see, okay, this post was effective, this one wasn't, next month we'll do this or that. Just an analyst role. They can't edit anything on the page. And you can read the different items here, but this is where you add or remove different managers to the page. Very important. Any questions on this screen? I'll mention very briefly under the notifications screen, 
just like I mentioned notifications over for uh, for Twitter, you might get a lot of uh, items in your inbox and such. You can always look here, turn things on or off. All of this is on by default. Um, so you're going to get a lot of updates and notifications when something happens. You can turn this on or off, depending on what you care about. Some of these I think are excessive, uh, like over here, email me every time some activity happens. No, I don't want to clutter my inbox personally, so you might want to turn that off. And if, you're, and if you've got the Facebook app, uh, you'll be able to manage that. Actually, there's a, there's a separate app. There's the Facebook personal app, and there's the Facebook pages app. So you need both of them. Well, at least the, the one that you, for the page. So, Facebook, I'll do iPhone first. A, uh, Facebook iPhone Pages app. You want to get the Pages app, Manager app. It's separate. It's not built into their main app, just like they've spun out the messaging portion to its own app. So they've got an app just for managing pages. Just, just because you have the Facebook app doesn't mean you've got the Facebook page managing app. It's the one that should have a flag on it. So if you're going to manage your pages on the go on your mobile device, you want the Facebook page managing app. It's for, I, it's for Android, it's for iPhone. Um, it's a separate download. So related to the concept of moderating your posts, we have a screen right here at the bottom, Activity Log. Click on Activity Log. This is the screen where it's going to show you here are the comments that are waiting approval. It's going to show you here activity about John posted this on Monday. Sally has this scheduled for Friday. We can schedule posts. That's very cool. I'll talk about that in a moment. But this is your activity log, and you can filter it. Well, show me any new photos added to the page, comments, posts by others. Right now it shows everything. And that was on the activity screen. And I think you can get to it a couple of ways. But one way is under Settings, Activity Log. So this is a screen you should be looking at to, to keep up with that. This is activity that's happening on your page what was posted, who posted it, moderating it, what's spam, what's video, what's, what's picture content. It's a brand new page, so I have nothing here. That's understandable. And the other related kind of screen like this is notifications. We have page, messages, notifications. Under notifications, oh, here it is also, activity. So under notifications, you'll get notified. Oh look, Victor Campos liked my page. He's a nice guy. You'll get your, your notifications of likes and comments and that sort of thing. Under notifications, requests, information requests, so questions and such, and then activity. In a, in a general sense, you can see that stuff, mentions and shares, but that other screen is more in-depth. We're just looking uh, at some of these other important screens because Facebook is very powerful. Facebook is very popular, but it's deceptively simple sometimes, or conversely, very confusing because there's just so much to, to look at. So I'll, I'll look at a couple more foundational things, and then we'll talk about 
being effective, posting effectively. Um, the other item here is publishing tools. This will show you a list of every post that's been published. And it used to be, maybe a year ago or, or so, whatever you posted on Facebook, you couldn't edit it after, I think, 10 minutes. They only give you a window of like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or 5 minutes or something that you can go back and edit it. Now you can edit any post that you ever published. So in contrast with Twitter, where once you tweet that thing, you either delete it and post it again because there's no edit. Facebook used to be that there was a time limit and then you couldn't edit it, so you had to delete it. Now you can, you can edit them, no problem. You could go back to a previously published post and change it if necessary. Google Plus also lets you edit any post at any time of yours. Schedule post, we'll see how to create one in a moment, but schedule posts are very useful uh, because I don't want to be changed to the computer all day long. I've got to run a business. So if you spend one day, if you spend your Monday and maybe an hour, you can plan a whole week or months worth of posts on Facebook and schedule them and they will automatically get published. You don't need any extra tools. It's all right here under the publishing tools. You can do the similar thing with Buffer. Remember I mentioned Buffer previously. Buffer will let you post to all the networks at different time periods and such. But there's one built in here to, to Facebook. And if you actually need to publish it sooner than scheduled, you can go back here and select it and publish it now. Or if you need to change the date, you can change it here as well. You can start to write a post and then come back to it, so you can draft, add it as a draft, and they're listed here. And any post that you have set to expire will be listed there, if you turned on the option to expire posts. If you don't see this, you didn't turn on that option on that other screen. Messages, of course, would show you any messages that, are, that you're in contact with people, so nothing big there. Any questions on any of the settings and stuff we've looked at? Yes? And the, when you look at the published post, and it tells you how many people you reached and liked mm -hmm. and published, what's, what's the, I mean, because it, it ranges a um, huge amount, um, what information you, would you take? Um, like if you look at one post that had like 305 reach, would you be looking at the time of day that you posted that? I mean, how would you use that? How would you find out why you got 305 on that particular one, but another post you only got five? That, coupled with another screen, uh, is, is going to give you the best answer for that. But it's good that you're thinking about how can these insights help me. Um, on this other screen, you may or may not have it. I don't have it because it's a brand new page. But one other screen you have here is Insights. If you've got Insights, this is your statistics screen. I showed you your statistics on Google Plus and on Twitter. Well, on Facebook, you've got Insights. You won't have Insights, however, if your page is very new and it hasn't had activity because there's no Insights to show you. But if you do have the Insights uh, tab, the Insights screen, that will break it down for you even more to tell you in detail, okay, here's the activity here, and you can break it down by date and time and gender and everything, and that's going to inform you, okay, I posted this photo just by looking at it right here. Here's some recent posts, and I'm seeing its reach. 484, 328, consistent, that one's a little lower. How much engagement? That one had higher engagement than that one, but less reach. Um, so that's helping to inform me well, what kind of post did I put? Um, was it a picture? So it tells you that was a photo. This one was just text, and notice the reach it had. So with the data, the answer, the, question, the answer to your question is the data itself. You have to look at it to determine what's effective. Uh, you have to post, you have to cast that net and then you'll see what you've caught. So if you are mostly posting photos and it's all the same sort of reach, try posting something else, something that's not a photo, something that's text or a link or a video, and then check back your insights and see if that, if that was a bigger impact, because people might have just been tuning out another photo, another photo. Then you have a video 
right. caught the attention. So, so my question is, if that's what it was, it was a video, and it had the largest amount mm -hmm. reaching. But did it did it send a video to to all the people that are tied to that page, and then they're just saying that three hundred five people responded or looked at it? Basically, but remember we have to we have to recall yeah. also. Even if I have 500 likes, Facebook is not going to send my content to all 500 anymore. Right. So it'll send it to some amount, but we saw that it sent it to more people than just your other kinds of posts. Right. So Facebook's algorithm itself is deciding, well, this account has been posting, this, this page has been posting the same thing over and over and over. It's kind of dying down. Oh, they posted something different? <laughs> Let's boost it up a little okay. bit. It's all part of the algorithm that's a trade secret. Yeah. There's some button that said boost. Yeah, well, that's, what we're, that's what we're getting to, exactly. Okay. That's, the big, that's the big secret right there. Because if you see briefly here on this particular client, all of these are reaching a good amount of people. It does have like, I don't know, 2,000 likes or something, and it's only reaching a quarter of that. That's just the nature of things. But look at this one. This reached 3,500. There are not 3,500 likes on this page yet. They reached more people than have liked it because that's been a boosted post, which we'll do in a moment. A boosted post is the post that you pay for, and it could be as little as $1. But we can clearly see much more reach, and that's very cynical, obviously, to say, very cynical, oh, of course it reaches more people because I'm paying for it. Yes, play in their playground or don't. Question? Um, can you throw a question that we had in questions before we move yes. on, I'll go back just a second. Mm -hmm. When you click moderating it, I'm going to find those places to approve them under publish post. Is that correct? Yes, let me let me confirm that. Um, you're going to see it um, under notifications activity. So uh, we've got notifications, activity, and then you can look at mentions. But the point is under notifications. Or also under settings, activity log, and you can look at comments. So you can filter it. So I'm showing this example of a real client, uh, Insights. show it like this. This is a longer period of time here. Uh, this is, I'm looking under insights and then reach, post reach. The number of people your post was served to, so the number of people that saw the post. Again, we cannot correlate the number of views and likes to sales. These networks can only lead the horse to water, can't make them drink. So, looking at this time horizon from 2014 to now, Notice how there's the color dark orange and light orange. Light orange is organic. Light orange is uh, is the reach that my post had without paying for it. So if I back it up over here just to compare. Okay, so there's a time period right here where the where we were posting stuff. And we can see the stuff on another screen. We were posting stuff, and then notice the spikes. Whenever we post something, there's been activity. So again, if you don't do it that often, then your spikes will be further between because you're not really talking to anyone. But there's something posted, and then those are the dates and such. So when something's posted, there's activity. And then it dies down a little bit, then there's a residual effect to it. 
And so at this time period, it was uh, 450 reach. Reach is just that your content was, sh was shown to people. We can look at, well, in that same time period, what were the likes and the comments and the shares? Well, that's good. On that day, there were 33 likes um, to the post. Not to the page, to the post. We see the likes to the page elsewhere. There were 14 comments and there were two shares. Same thing here, 23 likes to the post, five comments, four shares. So those correlate with the spikes up there. Let me zoom out a little bit. Like that. So this correlates with that up there. You have activity and you'll get results. Well, notice there's the there's the spike and the spikes don't get as high as they as they do sometimes, and that's related to a variety of things. The algorithm, the Facebook algorithm, the Facebook rules decide how far things go, the reach. But we always have in our pocket, if I go over here, look at that reached 1,500 reach compared to only 500 reach. Well, that was because that was a paid, that was paying Facebook, that was boosting a post, that was creating, that was crafting a Facebook post, putting a little money behind it, and then it reached. 1.5 thousand people rather than half a thousand people and notice it spread out over time there were 504 reach on that day a day later 1100 a day later 11.9 a day later 1200 and then a day later a little less a little less until the campaign funds ran out but then that was residually also upward so when you add paid posts to your strategy, you will reach more people and you'll have residual effects that also last after that. I can't tell you how much longer or give you a formula or whatever, that's all trade secrets on Facebook. You're just going to have to try it on your own, spend a few dollars here and there, as little as a dollar. Although maybe five and ten and twenty dollars is a little more effective. As we can see over here, Look at how that one jumped up to 2,000. That one, 5,000. Usually with these clients, we never really spend more than $30. That's the price of taking the family out to somewhere. Cheap, right? <laughs> but um, it's not that much, $30. And, you, and right here, it reached a 5,000. Conversely, look at how also that got us those likes and then those shares and those comments. And what I'm doing, as we'll do in a moment, yeah, we're going to throw money behind that, but we're also going to craft a, a post very similar to what we've been talking about Twitter and Google+. Plus. Your, your message and your content isn't going to change dramatically from platform to platform, just your tactic. On Google+, Plus, I said, we're going to craft a message and we're going to put it in a community. That's where everyone is. On Twitter, we're going to craft a message and add hashtags. That's um, where the people are that you care about. On Facebook, we're going to craft a message and we're going to boost it. We can go pretty far without boosting, but we'll go much further with boosting. And you may have an, an aversion to spending on, on this on Facebook, but it does work. This customer every time we do a boosted post it reaches more people and we can then check the cash register and see that more of that item was sold we can see that if we do a, a post about this particular meal the owner will then give us a report or if we ask for it they'll say look this was sold more times than normal because of that exposure on Facebook because there's so many people on Facebook even if you've only got 41 likes you can still reach 400 people if you pay for it. And we'll see how much we can pay to reach those those levels and we can choose good budgets. We don't have to be spending five hundred dollars. Maybe we've spent maybe we resolve to spend five hundred dollars in one year of Facebook or two years or whatever. We just have to do it consistently and smartly. Question? Yeah. Like you can do some manipulations and numbers to see something in your time. 
Yes, there's a screen somewhere here where we can benchmark ourselves uh, in relation to other related companies. <coughs> to remember where it's at. Oh yeah, right here. Uh, under Insights and Overview, we can then uh, set up pages to watch, which is to benchmark, which is to compare this page with another page, or more than one. So if we compare this particular client with this competitor, we can see some insights here. We'll get more of that benchmarking to see well, what are they doing, what can we do, what can we do better. Yes? As a consumer, can you tell if they post as they used to? No. Not to my knowledge. Because that's internal. There's nothing at the moment that that the post is marked as, it's just that they that, that it showed up for someone. That's it. So they don't get an indication that it's been boosted. They might change it at some point, uh, but anything that ch Facebook changes really is in service to how can they make Facebook better for Facebook, not for people. Yes. Um, pages to watch. Um, that's confidential. That's only. Um, yeah, to... that's only visible to you as a manager in this screen. It's not going to be visible elsewhere. So a lot of you might not have insights because you've got a new page, but if you've got a page with insights, I would look in here. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to look at every single one of these pages. Pretty self-explanatory, um, but this is your knowledge, this is your insight, what's working, what's not. Right here, because this page has been around for a while, this is showing you know the, the, the day that most activity happens seems to be on a Thursday, 3054. Uh, close behind it is on a Monday, 3050. And then the date with the, the, the least activity seems to be on a, on a Friday. No, uh, on a Tuesday. And then what time of the day do people visit? Well, the, 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 the time that people visit less, this is all for Facebook. This is not your website. This is just Facebook. The people that visit your Facebook page li less is 3 in the morning. This page. The, the time that they visit it more, uh, it seems to be there, uh, 8 p.m. So you won't know this until, until you start to use the page, post to the page, use it on a regular basis, maybe as a beginner, you know, resolve. Once a week, post something. You'll get better data the more you post. You don't have to boost every post, as I showed here. But the difference is stark. This got 22 clicks. People click 22 times on that link back to the website. This one that was boosted, 227. How about Mother's Day? So boosting does work. Okay, so about the actual content to post, well, what you've learned already on the previous days still applies because we have the ability to add status, which is just text. We can add photo, we can add video. We have a few things here that are a little bit different than Google Plus. There's an event, there's also a milestone. Some of you might also have offers. I like offers, but not everyone has that and offers are a way to do those sales and such. Uh, it needs a lot of setup, but it can be pretty effective to create a coupon on Facebook that people click on to buy your product. Um, you can add links as well. If I've got on my status here, if I'm bringing in a link from my blog, let's say I'm going to pull in a blog. We recently published a blog post about blogging. Uh, this is part two in a series, so if you don't know, you can go over to our blog, pmdinteractive.com slash blog, and the blog checklist part two was just published. This is a, a checklist about what you should be doing to blog effectively. 
So let's say I wanted to share that on our page. So I would need the link to, to that item. Right? There's the link to that blog post. I can copy a link and then in Facebook paste the link. Facebook is then pretty smart and then it gets an excerpt from the from the link and it shows it there. This is what's going to show up. And if I were then to publish this, some amount of the followers would see this. I, I can't tell you exactly how many because it's part of the trade secret algorithm. Some amount, let's say I've got 30 followers. Some amount we'll see, probably two or three, because Facebook is trying to show your content to the people that would care most about it organically. Below every post, I have the ability to boost it. So I'm going to focus more about boosting rather than what to write, because we've had two days of what to write on the other networks um, before boost post. I can publish it right now. I can schedule it. So again, I can spend one day to write 10 posts. That's 10 weeks of content, perhaps. Schedule them all here, and then they'll be published on that timetable that I set up. I can do backdate. That's not as useful, but it could be as in, what if we had a, an anniversary, our one-year anniversary of our business, and we were having so much fun running the business that we forgot to post about happy birthday to us. So we can backdate that so that it was published on the day of the birthday. Save it as a draft. But the thing is that boosting posts to reach more people. This requires that you've got a credit card set up, so if you, if you don't have one, it's going to ask you at some point, credit or debit, I would do credit card. And then you can create uh, audiences. It already remembered the last one that I, that I set up here. Um, I had this target audience set up called rich people. But I can create a new audience. And here's where you're going to target again. It's similar to how I set up my page audience previously, but this is more effective because now you're actually putting money behind it to really reach an audience. So I wish this would reset to all blank, even though I told it I want to create a new one. It doesn't reset to all blank for some reason. So let me clear this out a little bit. I guess it's trying to be helpful in that if you previously created an audience, you might want to be targeting the same audience, so it fills it in for you. I don't think that's useful. So this should look very familiar. Um, and it's going to be the same sort of concept. Okay, because I can target my boost to various audiences, various market segments, I can name them. So just for fun, on another class I made one called Rich People, where I'm targeting people in La Jolla and all the rich communities. But here, let's say this is my, um, I switched over to another account, Victor's Art, and I want to sell some of my artwork. So there's going to be an audience that I'm going to sell <coughs> um, to people, just uh, art collectors. Well, art fans. We'll start lower end first. I can do um, category, uh, co location. So again, target countries. Everyone's going to want my painting? Sure. But for the moment, I'm going to target it to a specific location, like San Diego. Twenty-five miles. What age ranges? Thirteen-year-olds are not going to like my art, but eighteen to sixty-five, sure. Um, targeting women, I can do that. And then interests again. And this one is saying four to ten, so I would take advantage of that at least four, four to ten. And this is an example where you where you still want to balance. You don't want to dilute the message, but be, because you are putting money behind it, they do work to spread your message to more of that audience. So let's see what happens. I'll do art. I mean, art to music, martial arts, artist, art to music. And it's going to recommend here. And I really like these because it then helps you fine tune even more. People give so much information to Facebook voluntarily, and here's where we're using it. So people that are also into painting, yeah, these are my paintings. 
and it's visual arts. So if anyone ever wrote about on their Facebook page or liked anything about painting and visual arts, Facebook knows that, and now I can use that to my advantage to target them. Let's see, arts and music. Um, maybe my paintings are surreal. So let's see what we get with surreal. Surreal humor, surrealism, surreal life, surrealism. No extra suggestions. Oh yeah, we got theater and illustration. Yes. When you're getting a list of words, keywords for say a blog or a, a, a YouTube or something, like that, go online. There's this guy has a theory of how to pick those. This guy has a theory of how to do it. And there was one website where I looked at it that said that you can find websites similar to yours as a way to reverse engineer so you can see what they're using for their keywords. Mm -hmm. How do you get that? Is there any? Um, that's a big can of worms that I open in the SEO class. Okay. Yeah. So um, in short though, what you've said about looking at what keywords are working for others, that is a good tactic. Oh, okay. And in the other class we go into much more detail, but also it's you, your own, yourself brainstorming and thinking about what to put yourself in the shoes of the people. What would they care about or what would they be searching for? So um, there's various ways to do it, but that's a couple of ways. Look at what your competitors are doing, and then you also brainstorm in the shoes of your potential clients. So this is just my target audience here. I can, of course, refine it, but I'll say this is a target audience. So then the cool thing is I'm going to be targeting these art fans. I can edit this audience. Here's my budget and my duration. So it's recommending $20.00 and I'll be able to reach 3,000 to 8,000 people out of a total of 420,000 people. $20 is not so bad, but you can always change this. 20, 60, and, and you say, well, I thought you said you could choose a dollar. Yes, choose your own, one dollar. You can do a dollar for one day, and this is going to still reach 180 to 470 people, even though I had two likes. So anyone can do this. For one day, seven days, 14 days. Well, if you go more than one day, you have to do more than one dollar. Notice a moment ago it complained. The minimum budget of one dollar per day, so your budget needs to be at least seven dollars. Okay, I want to keep this campaign open for seven days, seven dollars. Look at how much higher that jumped. So seven dollars once a month. That's a good investment in, in reaching Facebook audiences, run this ad until whenever, based on what we've chosen here. There's two, I think three, two big ways to do this. What I did was I started to write the post and then I clicked boost and then it took me to the screen. I could go back and boost any post that I've already posted and it will still then take advantage of the money and be kind of like a new post to people. So I can do it at the moment that I'm posting it, I can boost it, or I can post it, see how that goes, get a little traction for it maybe, and then a day later or whatever, then boost it. That's another viable thing, you can boost at any point. If I go back to a previous, well, I already did this for a class, I boosted that one. But um, I can do a normal publish and then later boost it. Yes? The audience that it reached, are they the personal Facebook or the business Facebook? Or both? To my knowledge, it skews toward personal. Because this is, this is the point of this. A, a company is trying to find customers and therefore people. Some, some companies are business to business, so it would be benefit them that their business is being targeted to other businesses. That's why when I set up this target audience here, you know, that's helping me reach an audience, but it's also ha helping Facebook to target the right audience. So it could go to other businesses if you are targeting the other businesses. One of the options here, it's more advanced, but at the very least, if you're starting off with boosting, you're, you're ahead of your competition. 
The other option that's a little more advanced is choosing a conversion pixel. A conversion tracking pixel is a small piece of code that lets you keep track of conversions, such as purchases and signups, on your website. The question was asked, well, if I put this in, how does that relate to sales and such? The default is that it doesn't. If you go through the extra step of creating a conversion pixel, then that will help you track more. Is this really working and is it resulting in sales? This is more advanced. We can't quite get into it, even if we had the time. Because this assumes you've got a website, you can edit your website, you can edit some code on your website. So this is going to ask you to add a little bit of code to your website so that then it can track the whole process from Facebook post to your website to the sales page. It's more advanced than, what, than, than we can get into, even if we had you know, the whole month long to work. Um, but that's something you can read up on your own and then use it if it's, if it's uh, doable for you. So this is the big secret about Facebook and it might be this is a big truth about Facebook and it might be an ugly truth. You might think, well, okay, paying for this, this is so opportunistic, I just want to use Facebook. Unfortunately, they've changed the rules, they're going to continue to change the rules. How they've changed things have been effective. You can tell that by the number of users. They've added another 500 million users in the last quarter. Their revenue has gone up. Their stock price has gone up. It's working. They have no reason not to go back to the old ways. So if you want to not get left behind, you need to think about investing in Facebook ads, boosting your post. Um, it can be very effective, as I've shown you for that client. I can show you other clients, and we'll see the spike in activity when you pay for it. Couple that with a link, something effective, a call to action. Let's say I'm going to boost this, but I'm also going to write something here, like uh, our free guide will help you get more readers to your, to your blog. What to write, again, is, is going to be very similar to all the platforms, but they've all got their nuances. On Google+, you're posting to communities. On, on Twitter, you're using hashtags. On Facebook, you're boosting posts. But in all of them, you're going to write something that answers the question, why would people care? You're going to answer that Word document that I wrote, that I gave you, and then you're going to think about the stuff that helps you answer these, these questions. And the more you do it, the better you get at it. To so think like a marketer, to think as convincing someone. Think about it that way too. All advertising is about convincing you. You're hungry, so th this hamburger will make you full. I'm trying to convince you to eat it. You stink, so buy this soap, it'll convince you to not smell bad anymore. You, um, your family needs security in the future, they're going to convince you to buy that annuity. So it's all about convincing everything, all marketing. So here, I'm convincing. It's free. It will help you get more readers. There's many ways to craft that message. But I'm just trying to convince people, read my blog post for you to learn how to write effective blogs. And, be, and through boosting, you will reach more of that audience. So we're going to end the main lecture on that note. There's still, of course, more we can learn about it, but I think you've got some of these tools to start to, to work on it, to think about it, and don't be afraid to spend $1 on Facebook, $7. And like I said, usually with our clients, $30 once a month. That's been pretty effective. More effective will be more money, of course, but we're, there's budgets. So, general questions? Yes. So, if you do put a hashtag on Facebook, will it, will it do anything? Or? Oh, okay, uh, good point. Hashtags, all the social networks have hashtags. Facebook saw that hashtags were effective on Twitter, so they said, me too. So you've got hashtags on Facebook, but I, from what I understand in my own experiences, it doesn't work. Hashtags, I think personally, and from what I've read, hashtags are dead on Facebook. Boosting is what you need to do. 
hashtags are supposed to link you to other blog posts or other Facebook posts related to the same topic, like on Twitter, like on Google+. Google+, Plus has hashtags. That didn't quite take off either. Communities did. So, have you, this class, when was the last time you clicked on uh, a hashtag on Facebook? Raise your hand. When was the last time you saw a hashtag on Facebook? Raise your hand. Okay, look at that. So, hashtags didn't seem to take root on Facebook. So, I wouldn't... I, I can't really say, though, on every... For every person, maybe your particular target audience loves hashtags. Doesn't hurt to try different messages and see if these hashtags are doing you any good. In my experience with my clients, it doesn't seem to be doing any good. Any other general questions? Yes? Okay, so we've got create call to action. Add a button to get people to take an action. So a call to action is just some phrase or something that entices people to do something. So if I click that, I can have people click this button to watch a video, click this button to book us now, click this button to play our game. Not every single kind of action is listed here. But for example, Shop Now is one of the most important ones. And then I add my company's shop page. And so now that's going to have, when someone visits my page, they're going to see Shop Now. If they're on the iPhone or Android, they're going to see Shop Now. You can change that whenever you want. Maybe this month I've got Shop Now. So when people, someone visits Shop Now right away, especially if you put in a big, beautiful picture right behind the Shop Now button. Next month, maybe we're trying to target something else. Because good marketing is about changing things. Um, edit call to action. Okay, next month we want everyone to see our, our video. So watch the video and then a link to the video on your website, on your YouTube, wherever. Just a link to your video. If you've got an app, then you use set link to the app. That's much more advanced. Most people don't have that. So this call to action for this month is watch a video. There's a video. Someone visits. That's the first thing they see. Maybe in the future they'll let us craft that a little bit more, such as watch our free seminar. But at the moment it's just these generic words, which I don't doubt they'll make they'll let you customize more later. But this is relatively new. Yes. What, what do you it's personal preference. If you are, if, if, if it's important for your face to be part of the face of the company, then yes. But uh, usually that's going to be your logo because that's creating consistency throughout the networks. If you're on Facebook, you probably should also use Twitter a bit and Google+, and all of them are going to use your same logo. So when someone jumps from platform to platform, they know it's you. They're going to be confused. I see this person's face, but on this other Twitter account, it's a logo. Is this the right page? Any confusion could then result in, in loss of likes or loss of activity. So keep your logo consistent. You can change up this background cover photo through networks. That's fine. That customizes each network, but do keep your logo consistent throughout your networks. Last question. You use your face, your personal face, your personal, you know, and then your company logo for your business. That's what I recommend. That's what I have up here. I have my own personal photo right there, and then I've got uh, a logo for for the other businesses. Last question. Like your personal one, I'll shut down so no one can get to it. It's just there to create the business. Yeah. So you just go in and. Yeah, and your personal one, you don't have to fill in your high school, and you don't have to fill in your favorite book, and you don't have to do any of that stuff. You just need to create a personal account to manage business accounts. Do you have to go in and undo them, or are they all automatically undone? No, you have to undo it. If you added all that stuff in and you don't want it to show up, you have to go in and delete it. Yeah. All right, everyone. So that was our three week class on social media for your business, part one. When you come back next week, if you come back next week, it'll be day one of part two. Therefore, I have to enroll everyone again.
But for the moment, that's the end of our part one.